Hi, it's Cheryl here and I'd like to encourage you all to start um, doing some daily drawing in a sketchbook. And the reason for that is, is, is that you're going to develop a discipline for drawing every day. And it doesn't matter whether you draw five minutes or whether you draw an hour, whatever you can fit in. So you're going to get a discipline, plus you're going to start to observe your world in a different way and your skills and your drawing skills are just going to explode as you experiment and as you revisit something every day. So your drawing skills will get better as well as you're going to end up with a wonderful collection of ideas and images. If you wanted to, you can just stick to different sorts of textures or you can stick to different sorts of colors or you can just choose a particular subject matter that you like. It doesn't really matter because this is your visual diary. This is um, yours and you don't have to show it to anybody if you don't want to. Now, I often use some of the ideas in my visual, visual diary to bounce into paintings. You might like to create comic characters. Um, you may like to do just sort of like textures or abstract paintings. It really doesn't matter what you want to do. It's fine because it is yours. So I'm hoping that we can get through a whole sketchbook over the next month. And I'd like to show you some of the sketchbooks that you might like to use. Now, these ones here are really good because they fit into your bag or into your pocket and you can take them with you wherever you go. These are just cartridge and I've already started with this one here and they fold back. And I like to use fine tip black pens or just black waterproof black pens. I find that the pencils I tend to be, I tend to like to rub out too much. <coughs> and these are just sort of easy to carry. Tiny little one, a little bit bigger. This size here. And this one here, I've, is a little, it's, um, uh, it's from a few, few years back. And if I can just flick through these, it's almost like anything that I can find. It really doesn't matter. Here are some sunglasses there that I have drawn. Um, some of my favorite things, the skulls. So it really doesn't matter. It's just getting you into the mood every day. So that is the cartridge paper. Now, if you would like to, if you would like to use some water, then you might like to use some of these thicker cotton Winsor & Newton watercolor pads. And these ones here are the 300 grams. So they're really quite thick. They come in 200 grams also, and you can, they're, they're perforated. So you can rip them out. And you can also use really thick paint on them and they will not buckle. And this particular one here, I have used masking tape with gouache, with a really thick gouache. And I have masked off the area there. And then when it's dry, I have just pulled it off. So that's the watercolour paper. There is a Bristol, which is a thick, smooth heavy cardboardy type paper. And these these really beautiful moleskins and this is their art collection. This one opens this way. They have a nice elastic piece that holds it shut. And I've got two of these and the other one under here. And they are beautifully bound. You can open them all the way up so that you can draw or paint both sides of the page. They have a nice little envelope to put some twigs in there. You might like to put a few leaves in there or something that you can actually take home. So that is the Moleskin Art Collection and I got that from an art shop. Now I just want to show you and I'm sure that you've got these at home also. I bought this 20 years ago when I lived in China. And this is like a Constantina or a fan shape. So you could imagine I could start at the ground and I could go all the way up and around or I could do a 360 view using this. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to find your sketchbooks and, um, and think about um, 
how you're going to sort of approach this, but you've just got to get started. Now, I like to have black tip, black felt tip pens. The art lines, they come in point, I don't know, I think it's 0 0.3 up to 0 0.8. You can buy these really nice little packets. These are lovely because they are waterproof. Stadler have the same. And Faber-Castell, they have a range called Pit Artist range. And this one here is their brush. And you can see it's got a B on it. The others that they have in this range of the Artist Pit Black, they have small, um, small, small, fine, I suppose, medium and large. And this one here has like a black brush on it. And I'm sure there are other brands out there also. So get yourself... A little pencil case some brushes like that clip them down and you're ready to go with your sketchbook now if you would like to add some color I've got some ideas here for you so an easy way to get out there with color and I used to do stacks of outside painting just using these gouache these pans and the gouache is um, it's like an opaque watercolor and it has the white there. You've got your palette up here. You add water to it and you can make it really transparent. And if it's really transparent, it's really in, well, I can't tell the difference between that and watercolor. Now the gouache also come in tubes. And this one here is just a little convenient set of designer set here by Winsor & Newton. And you've got your red, yellow, blue, there's a green, black, and there's white. And um, so that's another idea. But if you don't want to take these outside, what you can do is you can, you can squeeze a little bit into a palette. So I've got my blue there. I think I had yellow here. And I use this as my palette because this was an old DVD container and it has some of these tiny whirls. And I was using this as a mixing area here. And up the top, you've got these nice little clips. And I put my watercolour paper under here, like that. And this, I, I took this on a cycling trip. I was gone for 10 days. And I did about 800k. And I was actually, I was using this to paint some of our scenery at lunchtime. Um, like that. So that's just a really convenient little palette. And then on the front, this is the really opaque look that I was telling you about just there. So that's a little palette that you can use. You can use watercolour pans. Now this one here is a little on the big side. You can get these about a third of the size, which are terrific like that. And these are the watercolour pans and they actually clip in here and out of these. So as you use up a colour, you can, you can buy another colour or you can just, um, you can just take your favourite colours. So if you were painting the sea and if you wanted like the phthalo blues and the turquoise, then you would take your phthalo blues out. So that's your watercolour pans. Another really easy way to get some colour into your work, work is with your watercolour pencils. And you can just take out your favourite colours. You might take out your blue, your red, your yellows, maybe an ochre. And even if you put the colours over top of each other, you can mix them and you can work them out. So this is a nice idea also that you only need to take a few of these out and you could perhaps draw it in colour. And then you can just come back home and hit it with a little piece of water. So that's just a few ideas of, um, of the difference of the, the, the materials that you, can, that you can get. Now, it's important that you put these materials on your Christmas list. And I forgot to tell you that these work really well for grandchildren and for children. Children just love these. They are so easy to um, pack up. I've got three or four sets of these and they're easy to pack up. Kids just love them. Um, and it's a just it's a great idea for a Christmas present. Anyway, I would like you to go and flood the world with colour and um, and to take this on board. The next time that um, the next video I'm making is on some basic sort of shapes um, and how to do some basic drawing skills. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.